How's it going guys? Joxel here with another tech video. I haven't posted one in a very long time so I wanted to make this one a little special. I managed to get my hands on a brand new Sony Xperia XZ Premium and I wanted to give you guys my take on how this phone performs. If you guys would forgive me, I am a little sick, so if my voice doesn't sound optimal during this recording, I'm going to do my best to try and make it sound a little bit better after editing. So anyways, let's try and get to this unboxing. One of the things I've liked about Sony is that their boxing is very simple um, and very straightforward. Like most companies, as soon as you remove the cover, you're greeted by the phone itself. The first thing you'll initially notice is how slick and metallic this phone looks. It has the most mirror-like effect I have seen. Now, in pictures I've seen of the phone, I originally saw this and I thought I would be turned off by this feature because I figured no matter where you were, you'd always have glare. However, with the deep sea black version as compared to the chrome, I've noticed that the glare is not as bad and you can still see things through the phone very clearly. The only time you start getting noticeable glare is when you're viewing the phone like off axis a bit. But overall, this effect gives you a very premium feel, despite its case design being a little dated as compared to newer smartphones. So when you open the box, you'll see a pamphlet that kind of houses all the manuals and the charging cable. Nobody reads the manuals, so we'll just throw those in the box. The charging cable is USB Type-C, like most new smartphones, so if you are a fan of the new charging type and the new USB Type for faster data transfer and quicker charging, you should be happy about this. In order to turn the phone on, the power button is on the right side of the phone. Originally, this was also the place of the fingerprint sensor, however, in the US version of the phone, it got disabled due to security reasons, which is kind of a bummer considering that most new smartphones have some type of security system other than a typical passcode. So when the phone power is on, you'll notice that it comes shipped out the box with Android's latest version, Nougat, um, at 7.1. Um, there are rumors that eventually it will ship out with Oreo when that drops, but as of right now, you got the stock Android. Now, like most ma phone manufacturers, Sony has their own theme kind of overlaid on top of Android, so it's not as stock as like the Google Pixel, for example, but it still looks very clean and very simple to use. Now, Sony's lock screen is kind of cool and kind of not. Um, this isn't the default wallpaper, I obviously put my own wallpaper. Um, you do have access to Google Assistant, your regular unlock button, touch the slide, and a camera shortcut. Um, there is a dedicated camera button on the bottom right where my pinky is, um, if you ever want to open that up. Google Assistant, obviously, very fast, very snappy. Now, of course, this is to be expected, especially since Sony sports the Snapdragon 835. I believe it's the same processor that's in the S8. When it comes to overall performance, the two phones perform almost identically when it comes to processing speed and response time. Now I really like the glass featured on the Xperia specifically because it's very smooth. Um, it does have a coating over the glass to make it a little bit more smudge resistant and I find that it works very well. While I do leave fingerprints from time to time, it's easy to wipe off. Now this phone does have a pretty decent camera. It is a 13 megapixel front camera with a 19 megapixel back camera. Like I said before, there is a dedicated camera button, which is a pretty cool feature because it definitely makes taking photos a little bit more comfortable um, and adds less shake to when you're using, like I often use the volume press function on most smartphones to take photos. So by having a dedicated camera button, it makes launching it a lot quicker and makes taking photos a little bit easier and more stable. Now, while this phone is fairly large, one of the things I do not like is how big the keyboard is. Now, I'm pretty sure this is adjustable in the Android settings. It's been a while since I've had an Android phone, but the default keyboard is very clunky and kind of large, and it takes up a lot of the screen as compared to the rest of the display. So when it comes to like trying to swipe down or scroll while using the keyboard, it does get a bit cumbersome. Now one of the big selling points on this phone is the fact that it's one of the few phones to have a 4K high dynamic range display. Uh, up until the iPhone 8 was announced, it was the only phone that sported this high dynamic range display. 
However, before that, if you were someone who loves watching a lot of video and consuming a lot of media, this was the phone to have for its display. Now I will say, the one thing that I do like about the S8 as compared to the Sony is that its display is a bit brighter. While this display is very nice and does give you very good detail in your shadows and your light areas and allows you to pop out your color a lot, the phone doesn't get that bright. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's bright enough to see it on average, but when you're in the daylight or you got direct light causing a light like, glare on the screen, it doesn't get bright enough to be stunning, I guess. Despite this, however, if you are a heavy Netflix user or a heavy streamer who watches a lot of YouTube videos or just streams a lot of video content, this display is very good for that. Now, another major selling point of this phone was its built-in audio upscaler. Now, what is that you may ask? Well, an audio upscaler just basically runs your music and other audio through a filter, kind of like water, and it purifies it to make it sound closer to its original studio quality production. Now, is it noticeable? Typically, it's a night and day difference, but it all depends on the actual device that you're using it on. Some devices, upscaling is better than others, so I definitely wanted to test out the upscaling in this phone to see how well it changes the sound of your typical everyday music. Now, I apologize for the footage. I wasn't able to really get the screen as much when it came to this part of the video, but... Now, the phone features this technology called a Digital Sound Enhancement Engine, or a DSEE HX technology. Basically, like I said, this runs your audio through a filter, so that way it kind of enhances the sound of your audio. So what I decided to do was to plug in my pair of Skull Candies, and I wanted to test out how the music sounded with this on and off. Now this phone does feature other options like Clear Audio Plus, which basically enhances the vocals and makes them project out a little bit more, as well as a built-in equalizer, so you can change the uh, tune of your sound. But I wanted to test out the upscale and to see how big of a difference it made when using this phone. Now, when playing music, I didn't notice much of a difference. There was a very minimal enhancement of clarity uh, when it came to like background noises on the high end. But in terms of overall music quality, it didn't change much. Now, that may have been because I was streaming. Um, however, it typically shouldn't matter because this is running any type of compressed audio file through that filter to kind of upscale it. So it should have made a bigger difference. I didn't see it that big of a difference and that was one of the major selling points for me because I really like music and I really enjoy high audio or high end audio um, but this was going to be something really cool if it were to work better. Now one of the things I did enjoy are the music equalizer settings. It does give you different options such as a studio, dance hall, concert setting which actually changes the way your, your music sounds in your headset and I typically really enjoy the studio sound I felt like it added a little bit more depth to your soundstage but overall the music still sounds pretty good the, uh, the equalizer works well and everything else works just as supposedly normal I just was a little disappointed by the enhancement protocol because I thought it would work a little bit more def um, definitively but overall I mean it's still an improvement I guess now the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the last major selling point for me when it came to this phone, as with any Xperia phone, and that was the PS4 Remote Play. So I preset this up, I connected it to my PS4, I got my PS4 controller, I'll pair it real quick, and we're going to test out and see how well this thing works as a mini PS4 console. Once I got everything connected, I booted up Destiny 2 and I started playing right away. It actually works pretty well and the stereo speakers sound really good. Like they were surprisingly loud. Um, it even had a little bit of bass that was not expected at all. As you guys can see, I was fully capable of playing Destiny 2 without any major issues. Now. As expected, being that we're streaming this over an internet connection and even though I am in the same house, there was some input lag. So if you're playing something competitive, like Destiny 2 or something that requires a quick response, 
this would not be the optimal device to be playing on. Um, I'd still recommend just playing on the PS4. But if you're playing something like Arcade or something lightweight that you just want to kind of pass the time with, this feature is really cool because it works pretty well. Now, even if you don't have an extra PS4 controller that you can just lug around with you, you do have um, on-screen buttons. Now, they do not work nearly as well as a controller, so if you want to use this feature, it's best to use it with a controller. But overall, I was really surprised at how effective this method of streaming this video game was. I have to admit, it kind of felt a little magical because it was like literally having a mini PS4 wherever you want to go. And as long as you have a stable internet connection that is fast enough to be able to stream this content, you basically can play whatever you want whenever you want so that was really cool i really enjoyed it um and i thank sony for actually implementing this feature hopefully in the future it does fine they do fine tune things a little bit more so that way it's a little bit more consistent and uh fast now of course that will come with enhancements in terms of like internet speed and connection and how well you'll be able to stream games in the future but this does open the window and kind of give you a peek as to what is to come when it comes to wireless gaming but that's about it guys, that's everything that I have for you guys. For the most part, I love this phone, it's really cool. Really great Android phone if you want something that's a little bit on edge and a little bit different from the whole curved body crowd. Um, it's still a very premium phone with a very good processor that's perfect for gaming, whether it be 3D or platformer. Um, the music sounds really good through the, through the headphone jack, like most Android phones still have. It does have an SD card slot as well as a dual SIM, so those are pretty cool features that are mentionable. Um, very slick body overall it's a very premium phone and it's a great phone to have if you want something that's not a Samsung and it's a little bit closer to stock Android while still maintaining a couple of you know manufactured stock themes the Sony does really well for it also if you're a movie buff or someone who likes to stream a lot this phone has a beautiful display to do that on the high dynamic range does make a noticeable difference when it comes to viewing 4k and if you're watching 4k content it you can definitely see a night and day difference as compared to another phone like i compared it to my iphone and it was again a night and day difference in terms of the color depth and the overall clarity of the picture but overall i love this phone Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I plan on making a lot more tech videos in the future, especially since I'm starting to get a little bit more time in my hands to start recording more. So I hope you guys liked it. Please give me some feedback and let me know what you want to see next. I need some more ideas as I go around and pick up random tech that I don't need. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.